I bid you welcome. I welcome you to my house. Welcome to my house. Welcome to my home. Hello horror hounds and welcome to my horror house. It's very early and this video has a kind of confessional feel to it. So I feel like a real live vlogger. But with each new casting announcement for Halloween Kills, I find I lower my expectations more and more and more. Let's be honest, Halloween fans, this is a franchise of questionable quality anyway. And I speak from a place of love. I, I love the Halloween movies. They're a warm comfort, especially at this time of year. We have one stone cold classic and a slew of sequels which range from merely all right to downright awful. And I know we all have different ideas about which are the good sequels and which are the bad. But I don't think that there are many people who think that any of the films after John Carpenter's 1978 classic are truly, truly excellent. Heck, the best of the rest is the one that doesn't have anything to do with any of the others. Anyway, this is a franchise which has had a completely standalone sequel, uh, a couple of complete reboot movies, and two separate timeline resets. After Halloween 2018 became such a hit, I was genuinely pleased for all the fans who loved it, even though I was lukewarm at best towards it. The way I see it is that this, they get one more film to love than I do, one more than me, they win in this scenario. But as inevitably as night follows, Day, we're suddenly told that oh we had an idea for three films all along and we just it was just depending on how successful the first film was Jesus I sure am sick of hearing that and so Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends were announced and I began wondering would all three of these take place on the same night that would be pretty cool would we get a time jump to the following Halloween what to put a fine point on it gives. A recent picture of Jamie Lee Curtis on set seems to all but confirm that Halloween Kills will pick up right where Halloween 2018 left off. She's still got the cuts, the scrapes, uh, the burns from the end of that movie. And I like that. I love continuity between inst installments in a franchise, but with each new cast announcement, my heart has sunk a little further and I want to know whether I'm alone. Because look, I'm the kind of guy who is still mildly vexed that it seemed obligatory to put Ellen Ripley in every Alien movie. It's a big universe out there. How many more times is this one person gonna keep bumping into these things? And I realise I'm in a minority. But during Halloween 2018, which took the bold step of throwing out all continuity after the first film, I couldn't quiet the voice in my head that kept saying, so why is Laurie Strode in this? Sure, I get that she's still fucked up from what happened 40 years ago. That's all well and good. But there are no familial ties anymore. There is no reason whatsoever for Michael and Laurie to meet again. And all through the film, I couldn't 100% get on board why I should care. Not like with uh, H2O, H20. I certainly did care then. Laurie and Michael had a history in that film. They had blood ties and Laurie had a reason to believe that Michael would one day return to complete the work he started at that time 20 years ago. In Halloween 2018, it turned out that Michael didn't give a toss about Laurie. He'd also turned into a, a spree killer instead of a stalker, a spree killer who at some point realized that he needed to be a bit more shapy and then hid in a kid's closet for, how long was he there after going house to house? Anyway, it turned out that uh, Michael had to be hit with a car and then literally driven to Laurie's house in order for them to have a cinematic face off and Rather than expanding on the story they told in 2018, I'm worried that the world of Haddonfield is getting smaller and smaller. Anthony Michael Hall, who I like, is returning as uh, Tommy, the little boy that teenaged Laurie babysat 
40 years ago. And I know Tommy's been back before in Halloween 6, played by Paul Rudd, but by then the franchise was deep into its Cult of Thorn territory, and Myers had become such a prolific quasi-supernatural boogeyman that the idea that people who came into his orbit, no matter how briefly, could become obsessed by him, I was just like, well, sure, why not? But now Tommy's going to be joined by Lindsay Wallace, the, the little girl who was also being babysat that night, played once more by Kyle Richards, back again after 40 years. Why is anyone champing at the bit to find out how little Lindsay Wallace is getting on after 40 years? Well, if you are, then you are going to flip when you finally get closure on Lonnie Elam. Who? Okay, so... I'm obviously not a Halloween super fan, but when that bit of casting was announced, I had to look up who that character was that's returning. And yeah, it's the kid who teases Tommy in the first film about the boogeyman. He's gonna get you, he's gonna get you. And the one that tries to play knock down Ginger at the Myers house on Halloween night. Well, guess what? He's back, baby. I'll hold my hands up and say that I didn't even realize that uh, the douchey teenage boyfriend in Halloween 2018 was even supposed to be that character, Lonnie's son, 40 years on. And you know what? I don't care. So what? And most recently of all, the return of Nancy Stevens as Nurse Marion Chambers. Now, she's returned before in Halloween 2, now disregarded, and Halloween age 20, now disregarded. But those appearances made sense. Halloween 2 picked up right after the night of the original uh, and H20, uh, Michael visited her to raid Dr. Loomis's notes to find out where Laurie, his sister, was now living under an assumed name. So scrapping all the films after 1978, original Nurse Chambers was the character who was just in a car for a bit with Dr. Loomis that Michael stole and drove away in. That's it. Why the flying spaghetti monster is she back? The potential scope of everything just seems so reduced. In the 2018 film, Laurie seemed like an outlier, the only one holding on to her fear and grief and anger from that night 40 years ago. But it seems that that viewpoint was wrong. And now I imagine that every five years or so, Haddonfield hosts a reunion event for anyone who ever had anything to do with Michael Myers, no matter how tangential. Hey, it's the guy that used to deliver letters to the Myers house before he went all <coughs> But still, it's a connection. Welcome to the party, pal. Mark my words, before the end credits, on Halloween ends roles, we'll have met Ben Tramer, the guy Laurie had a crush on 40 years ago, and we'll finally find out who he eventually took to the prom.